Hey guys, what is going on? It is the last day of the year as well as Victor's birthday today and we are gonna try to catch some lobsters. It is a beautiful day out here. It is flat calm. I got my dad, my mom, my brother Jed, and then of course Vic. So wish us luck, let's see if we can find some. big rock but this rock over here has some I haven't looked at how big they are yet all right so we are at the first spot Victor jumped in to check the rocks to see if there are any here he said he saw some under one of the rocks so we're gonna see if he thinks they're big enough and then I'll anchor and then we'll all jump in Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But we are about to go down and catch these lobsters. <laughs> Good job, Brooke. First lobster of the day. Good job, Brooke. Keepers so far. I don't know about this one. This one's small. Is so, it really? Yeah. Look at him. His tentacles look good.
Told you it was the biggest. Oh yeah, baby. This is a keeper. <laughs> There's another one just like that in there. So this is their fourth keeper. Seventh lobster. Don't even need to measure this one because it's so big. Exact same route for every single one. Every single lobster we caught the exact same way. That was pretty good, huh? Uh huh. This one I need to measure. Ah. Uh, no. Nope. He looks bigger than the, most of the other ones we got. Look. He's exactly three. A lobster needs to be larger than three inches to keep. So technically, that's exactly three, and that's not legal. We've had two like that. They need to be over three inches. He's exactly three inches, so we gotta let him go. See you next time. Caught eight lobster out of that rock. What's the worst thing a diver can see under a rock? A moray eel. A big moray eel. They're kidding. Nope. We just stole eight lobster from them. And you said that some of the lobsters were missing legs? Yeah. It could be from that eel. Huh. Bro, take it. What the heck? That's all it is. Holy crap. <laughs> it's a good one. Too. Wow. It's like someone literally their chain just broke or something. It's a brand spanking new anchor. It is a very cool find, and I think this is like the perfect size for this boat, isn't it? It looks very similar to the anchor we currently have. Check it out. It's brand new. A nice find by Brian Christ. Happy birthday, Vic. <laughs> Thanks. That's your birthday present. It's not a bad birthday present. This sucker's expensive. Can you imagine your chain just breaking? And 20 feet of water and not going in to get your anchor? <laughs> no. You know how the lobsters are a little small? Yeah. Well, there's one that's a baby, okay? But you, you gotta video it or at least give me your GoPro and let me video it. There's two lobsters this big. Really? Give me your, give me your GoPro. If you ain't coming in, I gotta get it on. I gotta video it. and pull him out. My gear is still down there. Yeah. Good What's job, that? Dad. That's a nice one. I hope so. Good job. Well, my dad was the only one in the water checking this next spot and he said there was one lobster and he said he could do it himself and there you go. He did it, got the job done. This is number six going in the cooler. Thank God, Brooke. I had no more, I had no 
one more dive bit me. You did that so nice, man. I hope it turns out good on the on the GoPro. I can see it perfectly. You did a good job. No, I like that. That was awesome. <laughs> no, that was great. Wait, you see it on video. I got you down there with both your arms going. It was cool. Got him. Number seven. Alright guys, so we just finished up our dive. We ended up with seven keeper lobsters and that first rock, normally you guys always see Fisher using the tickle stick and tickling lobsters out to us, but since he wasn't here, Victor took his job today and he did an absolutely perfect job. So, good job, Mick. Thank you. And he was right, there was actually nine lobsters under that first rock. <laughs> and I think I left one more in there, but at the very end of the dive, I saw what every diver does not want to see under rock and that's a moray eel. About this big, that sucker could easily take off your hand, give you a little nip, and uh, we're in his home, so we took quite a few of his lobster out of his hole. Yeah, so we ended up getting seven keepers, but we did catch a lot of shorts today, but they were just barely shorts. Lobsters have to be greater than three inches, so if they are three inches, you have to let them go. So we had like three that were perfectly three inches, but gotta let those ones go. I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Just let them go, let them grow. Um, but the lobsters just today were not very large. How was your dive, Dad? Oh, my dive was good. I stayed in the water for a little while. Went to the glory hole, actually a spot that I found when I was 18 years old. So I've been diving that same rock for 42 years and uh, managed to pull one out of there today, so that felt good. I hope those, uh, that footage of those little ones turns out those were kind of cool to see today and uh, I hope the footage of me filming you catching that one by yourself I ran out of energy I was trying to tickle Brooke a lobster and I was finally out of energy and she took the net and the tickle stick and worked them both beautifully and uh, I filmed her doing that I hope it turns out good because that'll be that'll be a cool shot to see a day on the boat with my family look at this gorgeous weather and the reef was so crystal clear today I mean you can't ask for any more than that I will see you guys at the fillet table to clean these lobsters up all right guys 
so we are home at the dock and it's time to clean up our lobsters but i'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about the nuts and tickle sticks that you guys saw us using today we caught every single lobster besides like i think maybe two what we just grabbed with our hands but we used this tickle stick to tickle all the lobsters out and then the net to net the lobster once it gets tickled out of the rock just like this behind the tail and on top of them and then you guys always see me grab the lobster once it's in the net like that but I make all these lobster nets and tickle sticks handmade. You guys can find them on my website, floridalobsternets.com. I'll have a link in the description if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these. And since I was the tickler today, I'm going to tell you two things that make this tickle stick very unique. Number one, well, three things. Number one, it's clear, so the lobsters can't see it as much. But the thing I like most about it is the weight. It's a thick, thick tickle stick. A lot of the rocks that we dive, you guys might experience it yourselves. They're in there deep and a, a thin, frail aluminum stick, you can't really push them out. This thing really pushes them out of there. And this little candy cane hook is your best friend. You guys see that Brooke and I work as a team. She nets them, I tickle them. Every single lobster, I try to kind of pin down their tail with this little hook and it really helps rather than just having a flat tickle stick to kind of just pin them down there. That's just my two cents. I used it all day and I loved it. All right guys, so time to clean our lobster. The first thing I'm going to do is break off the tip of the antenna like this because this is going to be the tool that we need to clean out the lobster tail. So one hand on the head, one hand on the tail and you're going to just twist like... <gasps> <laughs> Look, let's get a close up of that. Just shot lobster blood all over me. So you're going to twist it off just like that. Now you can cook the head and use the head for lobster bisque. You can eat the legs. The legs don't have that much meat, especially on smaller lobsters like the ones we caught today. Um, and there's also some meat in the knuckles right here. These are called the knuckles. And if you ever hear lobsters making noise under rocks, they make it by moving their antenna like this. That's just me moving it. It's not him. He's dead. But that's how they make that noise is they move their antennas. And that is used to scare away predators. So now, I'm going to take that tip of the antenna I broke off and I'm going to stick it in here which is where the lobster's digestive tract is and pull out that digestive tract which obviously we don't want to eat. That's where all the poop's going to be. Get rid of that. And we have a beautiful clean lobster tail ready for the kitchen so I will see you guys there. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So it's actually been a couple days since we went lobstering and we froze our lobster. Anytime we're not going to eat lobster on like that very same day or the next day, we always freeze it. Frozen lobster, I'd say would taste as good the first day you have it as well as if it's been in the freezer for months. So we actually took out two lobsters from the opening day of lobster season out of the freezer that we still had so that we can have nine lobsters tonight because we're gonna have nine people. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how I prep the lobster. I already have five of them done right here. I took them out of the shells. And actually, Victor is going to take over cooking tonight. He has been asking me for a very long time of when he can guest chef for me. And why not let him do it when it's his birthday? <laughs> it's actually a few days later, so I'm not making him cook on his birthday. And besides, he wanted to, so don't come at me for that. But here are our beautiful scallops that we bought from the grocery store. And here are four of the beautiful lobsters that we caught the other day. So there's there's definitely still frozen, so it's going to be a little difficult. But basically, what I do is I take a nice, heavy-duty knife, and I'm going to just Cut down the center of it like this. Turn it this way. And you're, you're going all the way down until you hit the shell on the other side, but you're not cutting through the shell. But you wanna go all the way through. And then take out your knife, turn it over, and then you're gonna take the palm of your hand and crack the shell. And then it's gonna easily just peel right off just like that, pull it right out of the shell. Literally no meat left in there. That's one thing, the advantage to freezing is it comes out of the shell much easier. Very easy if you have frozen lobster and then you're trying to take it out of the shell versus fresh lobster, it is easier when you do it like that. Now, this also gives you a chance to rinse out, even though we took out the digestive tract, sometimes there's leftover dirt and sand that we're gonna rinse out. Rinse, rinse, rinse. 
So now I'm gonna take that, my knife and just like lay him out like this, like he's basically butterflied. And I'm kind of just going to skin it, almost like you would a fish. And I get rid of this slimy skin. And now you're left with just this beautiful piece of lobster meat. So you're gonna end up with two halves. Turn it around, same thing. Just kind of holding on to that. And there you go. This part, if you cook it, it's the part that becomes really red and is what makes a lobster tough because the way a lobster grows is they shed their shell. And a lobster is constantly regrowing a new shell underneath this one so that he can shed his old shell and have a new shell ready. So different times when you catch lobsters, they'll be more closer to that phase of molting. So that skin can be all different textures and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes you get a lobster that had just shed and his skin is not that bad. Or sometimes you get one that is about to shed and his skin is going to be really, really hard. So we just take this part off. It's not that big of a waste. And you could of course make lobster bisque out of the shell and those pieces as well. I'm gonna finish doing these lobsters and then I'm going to hand it over to Vic who's going to get us started on his pasta. Okay, sous chef Vic checking in. Brooke's the boss tonight. She's just gonna boss me around, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun. I think this is cool that she let me come on as a guest chef. So in here we got leek. Um, I have green, red, orange, and yellow bell pepper, as well as three yellow onions, all diced up. And we're gonna do a really delicious and super aromatic Cajun penne pasta. So in the Dutch oven, I'm gonna go in with about three to four tablespoons of olive oil. And we're gonna get our vegetables sauteing. So we're not gonna get them brown, we're just gonna soften them up a little bit. Look at all that. Red, green, orange, yellow. This gets you excited to cook. As you guys see, our vegetables are sauteed right now. They're not brown, but they're translucent. Well, the onions and leeks are, and they've softened up. They've taken off of that raw flavor and they got that sweetness to them now. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna take some tomato paste. As well as a bunch of Cajun seasoning and to my knowledge, all Cajun seasoning really is, is a mixture of paprika, cayenne, salt, pepper, garlic powder, thyme. Um, and that's what gives it that red color is that paprika. And this stuff right here, we just got at the grocery store, Hungarian paprika. We're gonna put some of that in there. And I'm just gonna toast these spices and that tomato paste, kind of get it to come to life and incorporate with all those veggies. And I almost forgot we got two whole heads of garlic going in. Now we're gonna deglaze and give our sauce some acid. We're gonna go in some white wine. We're gonna let most of this wine cook out. So most of our wine has cooked out now. We're gonna go in with some clam juice. as well as whole minced clams. This is the secret to thicken up a sauce or a pasta or anything, or to give it a lot of flavor for our gravy. It's a little homemade roux. It took me about 10, 12 minutes to make equal parts flour and butter. And we're just gonna slowly work this in to our pasta sauce. It's gonna thicken it up and it also gives it a really good nutty flavor. Okay, so we got two scallops gonna go on. One is gonna go in the pasta sauce and I, basically I'm gonna take this off, kill the heat, the scallops are just gonna cook in here and they're gonna help to season our sauce. And then we also have bigger sea scallops that we're gonna sear that are just gonna go on top of our pasta. So you're gonna get the best of both worlds. So 
So we're gonna sear our lobster, pretty high heat. Going in with some olive oil, I want them to get a crust on them, so I patted them really dry. And they have Old Bay, salt, and pepper on them. Okay, we're gonna go down with the scallops. Scallops don't take very long to cook. Okay, now we're gonna flip the lobsters, and that's what we want, just a little bit of crust on there. Finish off with our lobster. The one gets two pieces. And then to finish it off, a little homegrown parsley. Victor absolutely killed it. I can't wait to try it. It looks yeah. so good. Okay, everybody, you can come. Come get a plate, go to the table. <laughs> Everything is delicious. The um, little bay scallops are so tender. The sea scallops were tender and delicious. The lobster cooked to perfection. First thing I ate was was all the lobster. That was fantastic. So another um, another thousand dollar dinner at Rook and Vic's house. I love it. So yeah, delicious everything. Scallops, lobster, the sauce so good. I never had sauce like this. Very good. Really, really good. That yeah, was amazing. The lobster was super tender, and the the sauce from the pasta was really good. And there's a ton of things in it. Good meal. Like my dad said, everything was really tender. Um, the Cajun spice, perfect amount of kick, not too overpowering. I'm sure this is just a little taste of what's to come for 2022, so thanks, Mike. I agree with everyone. The lobster was super tender. He hardly did anything to it, just a little salt and pepper and um, what other spice you put on there? Old Bay. Old Bay, but it was fantastic. It's our first meal of 2022. We get to share it with the ones we love, and I mean, you can't go wrong. Fresh lobster, scallops, great day on the water, great day in the kitchen, and great day at the dinner table.